Good morning, boys and girls. Today we're going to tie an RS2. This is a uh, just ridiculously popular Colorado fly pattern. It's been around a long time, and um, I just so happen to have tied 80 gazillion of these things. So um, I figure I'll show you show you how I do them. Um, I'm going to start with the TMCO 101. This is a uh, ring eye dry fly hook, which is sort of the conventional hook uh, that it's tied on. Uh, you can certainly tie it on a 100. I just don't think it looks right. So the ring eye, the straight eye is the one that I want to use to tie this fly. For thread, I'm going to use gray 8 dot uni. And I'm going to take this thread and I'm going to run it through my fingers a few times to sort of flatten it out. You can also use the back side of your scissors to flatten that thread a bit. And I'm going to start the thread right at about two eye lengths back from the hook eye, which is coincidentally about the 80% point on the hook. And I want to leave a tag end. I want to leave a few inches of tag end. I don't need 10 inches of it. I need about 3 inches. Uh, I want to leave a tag end. And I'm going to hold this tag end just slightly toward me as I wrap back over it. And what I ultimately want is my thread torque to twist that tag end to the top of the hook all the way back here to the bend. So you can see that that is squared up right on top of the hook. Now the tails on my RS2s, um, as it turns out, um, this is just the way I've tied them commercially for years and years. As it turns out, this fly is entirely synthetic. So I'm going to use some white microfibits or tailing fibers. These are the nylon, nylon paintbrush bristles. Um, I'm going to take two of them, and I want to make sure that their tips are even, about like so. And I'm going to measure these about a shank length. Now, in a size 20, you can be a skosh longer than a shank length. You don't want to be a lot longer, but you could stretch that out a bit and be okay. We're just going to use a couple of fibers, so it's not going to add bulk to the fly. But I want about a shank length, maybe a shank, shank and a half at most. I'm going to butt those two fibers into my fingers. So now I've got the tips, the tapered tips in my fingertips. And I'm going to lay these across the hook. And I'll turn this a bit so you can kind of see my angle. You can see they're laying across the hook. So the butt ends um, are pointing at my left shoulder and I'm holding the tips in my right fingertips. My, I tie left-handed, so Things are backwards if you're a righty. Um, but I'm angling these across and back toward my body. So right hand pointing the butt ends at my left shoulder across the top of the hook. And I've got them right down touching the hook. I'm going to try to move my finger back out of the way a bit there. And I'm going to come up and over to catch that. And you can see that's a soft turn of thread. And you, if you watch those butt ends, you can see them roll to the top. I'm going to make a couple turns in front of there. like so. Now that's the important part that we want to worry about right there, is that those tails and that tag end are square up on top of the hook. If you've got the tails off to one side, it's going to wreak a little havoc when we're trying to, to separate these tails. So you want to make sure they're up on top. So now I'm going to take my thumbnail and push it up underneath those tails to separate them. You can see how they'll divide. So I'm just going to push, and these are synthetic fibers. They're very tough, so don't feel like you have to be delicate with them. You can sort of maneuver these right where you want them to be. And I want them about 45 degrees to each other. What I'm going to do here is pull the tag end up between those two tails. And you can see as I do that how that influences the tails. When I pull real hard, they spread further. If I pull to one side, I can influence one tail or the other. Um, I'm pretty squared up there, so I'm going to pull straight up between the two tails and tie that tag end down with a couple of turns so that I've got a nicely divided spread tail there. And that is how you do a, a split tail on an RS2. And we can kind of maneuver those and push those around wherever you need to be. Don't, don't feel bad about having to do that if you need to maneuver things a bit. As I said, they're synthetic fibers. They're, they're very malleable and they're tough, so you're not going to hurt them. So now I'm going to come forward over both the tag end of the thread and the butt ends of the tail. Right back up to where I started the thread. And I'll trim those butt ends out. I'm going to use a little gray superfine dubbing. This is Adam's gray superfine dubbing. And I'm just going to take a tiny little pinch. Now, this is a true story. Um, a package of superfine dubbing. One $2.50 package of superfine dubbing. We'll tie 700 dozen size 20 RS2s. I know that for a fact. I've done it. Um, so that will tell you how much dubbing you need to tie this fly. Tiny, tiny little bits. Um, as a matter of fact, the thread base that I've got on there builds most of the bulk that I need on this fly. So I'm not really going to add a lot to it with the dubbing. So I'm just going to put a very thin layer of dubbing on the thread. 
I'm going to use my bare thread that I've got between the dubbing and the hook to work back to the bend. And I'm going to put the first turn of dubbing behind the tails. And you can see as I lift, pull forward on that, that'll lift the tails. Next turn right in front. And then I'm going to work forward up to that 80%. And just build a bit of a taper there on the front end. This dang camera makes everything show. Looks like it's got a hair's mask body. So nice, tightly dubbed, thin abdomen. Now I'm going to make a thread base up to the hook eye and back to the front edge of the abdomen. And this is where I'm going to tie the wing in. Now again, there's 917, last time I counted, 917 different materials you can use for the wing on an RS2. Um, what I like to use is Antron yarn. This is just bright white Antron yarn. And it's cheap, it's quick, it's easy. There's a whole strand. Now one of the catches, one of the things that I like to do to this is I'm going to take a whole strand and I'm going to cut the ends so that they're square. And I'm going to burn the ends, pinch them together, and let go. So that let go part uh, is important. If you don't let go, you'll burn your fingers, so don't say I didn't warn you. And what that does for me, melting those ends together, what that does is that gives me a clump that will stay stuck together until I can tie a dozen flies before it starts to fall apart. So it just maintains the structure of the strand, and that's a whole strand as it came off of the card. So now I've cut the other end square, and I'm going to come in and I'm going to catch this with a pinch wrap. So I'm going to come and I'm going to take the the antron in my fingertips and set it right down on the hook. So you can see that's touching the hook shank. I'm going to come up with the thread and push the thread back in my fingertips and then drop it on the far side. What I've got inside my fingertips now is that loop of thread, this loop right here. So what my pinch wrap is doing is allowing me to tie that down at the front edge of the body. And when I tighten that down, I can slide those thread wraps down inside my fingertips. And I always want to do two. One turn of thread doesn't go all the way around the hook. It just goes from one side to the other. So I always want to do two pinch wraps. And now I can hold my thread toward me, and that's just to close that loop. And I'll pull these ends down so that they're behind the hook eye. They don't have to be all square. Uh, they just need to be behind the hook eye. And then I can wrap forward over them to clean them up. Now I'm going to take a little pinch of dubbing just to finish off the thorax or the head of this fly. And I try to get this dubbing fairly close to the hook. Um, we can see, I actually can't see it with my eyeball, but on the camera I can see that there's one little stub of antron sticking out right here. Um, I'm going to show you hopefully a trick to catch that. See, I can angle this thread wrap forward and push that back. There we go, and we caught it. Um, so that's just to smooth things out. Not a big deal, but if it was bigger, that's how you'd do it. It's also how you do it if it's smaller. So I'm going to dub right back up to the base of the wing. And then I'm going to round out the thorax as I come forward with that last bit of dubbing and finish right behind the hook eye. Come in and whip finish. Trim my thread out. And my wing length is going to be I'm going to take the wing and pull it forward over the hook eye. I'm going to set my scissors square across the hook eye right at the center and trim that wing off. So it's just a short little stub wing. Now doing that that way means that if you tied your wing in too far back, your wing is also going to be too long. Or if you tied it in too far forward, it's going to be too short. Uh, what we want to do is get it tied in right at 80%. This camera is going to be the death of me. I can see all kinds of little single fibers. All right, so there's our RS2. Uh, take your thumbnail back up underneath there, kind of reposition those tails. You kind of manhandle them a bit when you when you do the wing. But there's that old Colorado staple, the RS2. Fun fly. Uh, God, I've caught a gazillion fish on this thing. Um, to be perfectly honest with you, I hardly ever fish it anymore just because I already know it works. Um, it's a little boring to me at this point, but uh, that doesn't mean you shouldn't have some in your box. You should, and I still do. So... Um, Twist a few up, tie them in different colors, black, brown, olive, gray. Those are all good ones. Um, that's the RS2. Hope you enjoyed it. Come back and see us again soon. Take care. Mm -hmm.